Don't be afraid. There's no need to be afraid. We must go through the flames, but the flames will not hurt us. Not our true selves, our spiritual selves. I know his will, and it's time. This world is molded in filth. It's too far gone. They sent demons to test our resolve. They expected us to give up the fight, but here, today, we prove to all of them that we never gave up. Our faith never wavered. Today, we take our place at the foot of the throne of the Lord. Here now, we'll dull the bodies a little. There's no need for it to hurt. Here, drink this. Drink this. Pass these around. Things will go a little fuzzy, but then the flames will take us, and we will join our Lord in his heaven. We'll be by his side forever, where we belong. Amen. Amen. Boy, I love each and every one of you so much. God bless. That's when they locked the doors, and then Andrew and Leonard started soaking rags and lighter fluid while I, I started handing out the cups. Little paper cups full of crushed up quaaludes mixed with lemonade. Father kept preaching as we drank. They lit the rags and put them around the outer walls. Everything caught so quickly, as soon as everything was on fire and, and people just sat, sat down in it, let it take them. Something clicked, I, I don't know what. I needed to get out, I didn't want to die. I remembered Father's temple and I ran. started the fire. Ma'am, I know you've been through a lot, but we need your cooperation to piece all of this together. Who started the fire? Um, pr pretty much everyone. Father James with the first flame, but the others helped it spread. So they weren't coerced? No. They were weeping with joy. People were singing. And you? What did you do? Ma'am? Honey, you're being quiet. I don't know what to say. It's just... Lillian, was it something we did? Dad! I just don't understand how you could run off and join some insane cult. I don't know, Dad. I don't know. You're a smart girl. What were you thinking? Lillian, the things I've heard on the news... Where are you going? So, Lillian. Have you been having any more thoughts since your last attempt? All the time. It seems as if you almost regret surviving the fire. I don't know. I, I don't. It's so confusing. I didn't want to die, but I feel like I let them all down. Let them down because you didn't save them? Or because you didn't die with them? I don't know anymore. Well, listen to me. No matter what, you deserve to live. I promise you. Lillian, you deserve to live. I... I need to go. I, I can't do this right now. I, I can't. 
I'm sure you don't want to hear me ramble about mechanical engineering for another 20 minutes. Tell me more about you. You study communications, right? Bad job does that get you? <laughs> well, right off the bat, not much. I, I couldn't find work, so I uh, ended up backpacking through Europe for a year after college. Oh, cool. I've always wanted to do something like that. I bet it was amazing. Yeah, it was super fulfilling to see all those different ways of life. Really eye-opening. God, that was a long time ago. Man, I'm jealous. I jumped right into work after school. Working 70, what, 80 hours? You know how it is. Just expect to devote everything to it. It's like a, like a religion. It took me a while to see how messed up it was. Yeah, I can imagine. One unheard message. First unheard message sent yesterday at 7.15 p.m. Lil, is, is everything all right? I've been trying to get a hold of you all day. Pl please pick up. I'm worried about you. Okay, just, just call me back. Love you. End of message. To delete this message, press 7. Message deleted. I remember now. I tried not to, and I thought I could move on. Pretend it hadn't happened. But here it is, I'm looking at it. I was here. We were all here. And now it's just me. Oh, Lil, Jesus, there you are. I tried to get a hold of you for hours. Where are you? Hey. I had to take care of something. Look, just... Are you okay? I was getting worried. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm fine. Um, I'm heading home now. Tim? There's some things I need to tell you. I met Anne first, waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed and said nothing, nothing at all, that what she had to offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James. <laughs> 